So this is part of what they do. It's kind of like why they tell you about the cyclical nature, and then you mount, you go, and you, then you, you get put back, which is different than if you go around, and then you come up, and then you go back the other way, and then you come around. Yeah, I see. Arrive. It's not really reverse engineering. It's not like you intentionally set up a frame job, and then at a certain point you try to turn the valve, and then you undo it. And so you end up at a place that's actually kind of where you want to be, but where your opposition was standing five years before, 10 years before, 20 years before. All right. So, I mean, I looked at it in reverse. It had certain implications. What did I do? What was the actual sequence? What did I do? How diabolical is it? Right? Do you believe yourself to be the one driving? Do you believe right now you're in some situation where you are exhibiting your command? And so the successful execution of this will then be credited to you? Because my understanding is in some manner when you're surveilling me without actually verifying that you have the authority to do anything that you've alleged you've been the one to actually be responsible for or at least do compensation for doing, then you understand, well, I was in control. I was the one that was manning the fort or uh, commanding the operation or driving the vehicle or uh, captain of the ship, right? You're the helms person. And so by virtue of that, you've demonstrated command. And so you have free reign to do whatever you want. And the actual effective execution, the actual effect of the execution gets blamed on the person who's actually on camera. Whereas you got the cover of what? Completely unconstitutional laws regarding confidentiality on contract bidding. Because if you like what I do, then you're gonna seal the deal. Then you got the bid. Then you get to get the credit or parse it out to whoever it is you want where the actual operationalization and the sequencing of events can be something that's put to you specifically, right? All right. Well, I'm very glad I found this because it, uh, it does correlate with certain matters. What did we have? First case filed August 6, 2020. At least that's what it says. In re Texas General Land Office and George P. Bush named in his official capacity as Texas Land Commissioner. Then we have a motion, joint motion to dismiss. That's what's coming up in the sequence here. What's the date of that? Well, the date in on this would be for July 7th, 2021. You know what Ju July 7th, 2021 is? One year after the issue of the Dallas Municipal Bond, specifically concerning water and sewerage, if I'm correct. Am I correct? Yes, I am. What's next? What's this say here? Filed August 5th, 2020. Canadian River Municipal Water Authority versus Hayhook Limited. What's next? Brief of appellee concerning Canadian River Municipal Water Authority versus Hayhook Limited. The date on this one is, what is this? When was this one dated? It's very comprehensive. There's appendixes oh my there's even a canceled check in here look at that has the account number and everything i love it when that happens but that's not what i was concerned about what i was concerned about was the date which is december 4th 2020 you know what december 4th of 2020 is that is two years after december 4th of 2018 and we have filed august 5th 2020 City of Corpus Christi versus Graham Construction Services Incorporated. Last appellant brief filed. Reply to response, October 28th, 2020. What's October 28th, 2020? That would be one day before the second anniversary of the other 311, right? Then we have response to petition for review, dated for, accepted, 
October 19th, 2020. What's that? 10 days before October 29th of 2020. Then we have filed August 3rd, 2020. Lean. Case type lean. I remarked on this because I haven't seen this before. Style. In re a purported lien or claim against, and then it has an address located in Texas. Here's the problem. The dates correlate with a recent issuance on a municipal bond for Houston that is a first lien issued this year. See, my contention is there was no need and nothing legitimate about issuing a municipal bond for Houston that was a first lien bond because they should already have attended to the criminal implications of bond fraud from 2017. What do we have next? Filed, again, alleged, right? August 3rd, 2020. Case type, forfeiture, all other, not bond. $1,030 in U.S. currency versus the state of Texas. Another one, July 31st, 2020. Wait a second. All it says, case type, original writ of mandamus, and then it's transferred to the case number before it, but there's no information at all except for a court case number that is not a case number. I'm sorry, it does list a party, an applicant, but no representative and nothing else. Is this a pro se petition? It's a, it looks like it has a, uh, it looks like it's a case from, is this a case from 19, an older case? Well, I mean, it's a mystery, right? Is it one of those things that would be confidential? Mm. Then we've got filed July 29, 2020, personal injury, Royal Express Incorporated versus Martin Alonzo and Philip A. Meyer, court appointed receiver. It's a personal injury case. But it just so happens that a reply brief was filed 10 days after a federal congressional committee hearing regarding inventories for firearms, or rather it had to do with legislation concerning firearms. And as a part of the legislation concerning firearms, it discussed compilations of inventories connected to registrations of firearms and the owners of those firearms. Now this was a federal process, right? This was a federal piece of legislation. It would have nothing to do with anything going on today, including an announcement that something with a similarly named reference had been given <clears throat> drilling rights. Uh, not anything having to do with the Canadian Municipal Water Authority. Nothing at all. All of these cases were, by the way, uh, not ones I have seen before today. Next, the Swern Law Firm, PLLC, versus Clayton Woods Homeowners Association and Salem Solomon, a.k.a. Sally Solomon. I see. So you're pulling that book off your bookshelf again, huh? See, I was looking at the book on the other bookshelf. And when you gave me that look as if, be quiet, I thought that you were a Nazi hunter. I didn't think you were a fucking Nazi. So when you tell me things about how you have a history of witchcraft in your family and the people I've been looking for who actually helped craft legislation regarding homeowners associations end up mysteriously appearing after that train ride, right? What do you think I'm supposed to think about this? Did you think you were qualified to be, I don't know, president of the United States? Did you think you were qualified to be, I don't know, the head of the CIA? Yeah, it looks like what you were vying for was some sort of real property interest in a prison camp, right? And that you were intending to get it bonded through the Railroad Commission. Yeah. Unfortunately, what there is also here on my desktop is evidence of a violation of the public meetings laws concerning the state of Texas. How certain information is by law required to be presented to the public in 
places like public libraries, which unfortunately were intentionally closed down during the time frames of public review, ostensibly because of COVID-19, while other changes to policy that would have impacted the legality of a process required an on-site meeting in order to confirm processes related to things up to and including rule changes. And if the governor does something like say, well, I've lifted the period where people are not allowed to go to public buildings for meetings, that has been lifted and then you have your meeting, you don't have a right to say ex post facto, well, there was a preclusion of being able to attend the meeting because of a declaration by the governor. The truth of the matter is the governor had intentionally and strategically lifted that preclusion the day before, the weekend before that meeting was to occur and nothing you've done since you materially misrepresented the circumstances under which you engaged in illegal process around changing your rules up to and including trying to mischaracterize them as changes to constitution has been legal. Now, just because you've gotten away with it for a year, even if you've gotten away for, with it for 20 years, doesn't mean it's legal, right? And so none of these have legal standing, but they do belie and under and represent a process whereby actual government documents have been intentionally tampered with during a specific period of time did you just not think anybody was going to check or did you hope that whoever was going to check was going to take their cut and then you would be able to do what put that in your budget is that what you did because so far as I know, the actual pressing issues of the state, what are you going to put this under? Would this be considered somewhere in the way of trying to determine whether or not your casino lobbying speculation paid off? Oh. Hmm. You missed. <laughs>